Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we're creating a sticky logo effect with Cinema 4D's new cloth and soft body dynamic system. This tutorial was brought to you by our epic Black Friday sale over at cgshortcuts.com, where you can get 20% off all of our courses from today until Sunday night. So make sure you head over there after the tutorial. There's a link down below. Okay, let's hop into Cinema 4D. So in our scene, we have our logo and we're using the new CG Shortcuts logo, but you can use any logo you like. And we've also got this cube here for our logo to collide with and stick to and a floor to catch our logo when it falls to the ground. Our scene is also set to 24 frames per second and we have 150 frames in our timeline. And as with all simulations, it's always good to work at real world scale. And if we take a look at our logo here, you can see that this guy is 50 centimeters high. So not too big and not too small. It should be just right for our simulation. So the first thing we need to do is apply some dynamics to our logo and have it fall to the ground. So with it selected, we can hit Shift C on the keyboard to bring up our command window here. And we'll start typing cloth and we wanna grab a cloth tag. And we want the PBP simulation tag and not the old school cloth tag. And with that added, if we hit play, that's going to drop straight down through our floor. So now we need to add our collisions to these two objects. So let's do the floor first. We'll hit Shift C again. And this time we'll look for the collider and again, we want the PPD version. Then we'll just copy that tag onto the cube as well. And we'll play that back. And it is now colliding with the floor, but if we take a look under here, it's also poking through and looking a little bit weird. And that's very likely because of the geometry that we have here on our logo. We've just got these single flat polygons on the front here and a few subdivisions going back this way. But ideally we want nice even geometry across the entire object. So we could go back in here and mess around with the intermediate points down here. But I think the best option is going to be using another new tool in the latest version of Cinema 4D, and that's the remesh. So again, with this selected, let's look for the remesh and holding Alt, we'll click on that. So it's applied as a parent. And straight away, that's giving us a much more even distribution of polygons across our logo. And remesh has been around in Cinema 4D for a while, but they've recently incorporated a better algorithm from ZBrush, which also allows us to reduce the amount of polygons in our mesh. We can decrease this to maybe 50%, which will give us half the amount of polygons, which is great because the lower the polygon count, the faster the simulation usually. So let's give it a try. And it actually looks kind of slow, which is probably because we've got the dynamics tag still on the original geometry. But if we rewind this, and move the cloth tag to the new remeshed version and play that, you can see it simulates much faster. And with the evenly spaced geometry, it's also colliding with the floor correctly now. Okay, so that's the first step. Now we wanna start our logo over here outside the camera view and have it propelled toward the wall where it'll collide and stick and slowly peel off and fall to the ground, leaving a trail behind on the wall. So we'll need to animate our logo but before we do so, let's just grab its cloth tag and down under basic, let's just disable that for now so we can move the object around manually. Then we'll place our remesh logo into a null, which will make animating it a bit easier. So we'll hit Alt G on the keyboard to group that and we can rename it to animation so we don't get confused. And I'm going to smash this into the wall fairly quickly. So the animation should be about 10 frames long so on frame 10, let's keyframe the Z axis, which I think is the direction we want. Let's keyframe that in its current position. Then we'll go back to the beginning and move this back here to about 300 centimeters, which puts it way back here out of the camera view. And we'll keyframe that. So we're going to fire this from three meters away straight into the wall. So let's have a look at that. Okay, that looks good. So now we can go back to our remeshed logo and re-enable the cloth dynamics tag and we'll see what happens now. And it just drops straight down with gravity again. And we seem to have completely lost that animation. And that's because dynamic simulations will always override any keyframed animation unless we tell it otherwise. And in the new cloth system, that's as easy as going over to the mix animation tab 
which as the name suggests, will allow us to mix in the keyframed animation or have it influence the simulation. And there's two methods we can use to do this, but we're going to use the mix with force option. So let's enable that. And if we hit play now, that animation starts to influence the simulation fairly loosely at the moment. But if we rewind this and increase this to 100% and try that, it's now following the animation a lot closer, but possibly too close because it's sticking to that path and actually going through the wall. So what we need to do is have it follow along with the animation at 100% strength, just until it's about to slam into the wall, at which point we'll decrease the influence of the mix, which in theory should allow it to be propelled into the wall and not through it. So let's do that. We'll go back to the beginning and just step through frame by frame until we're just about to reach the wall. About there should be good, just so there's a little bit of space still left in between. And we'll keyframe the strength at 100 there. Then we'll step forward one more frame where it's just about to hit and we'll turn the mix animation strength all the way back to zero and keyframe that. Okay, let's see what that gives us. Cool, we're now smashing into the wall nicely. We just need to figure out how to make it stick. So we'll rewind again and start by making the cube a bit stickier. If we go into its collider tag, we've got this stick option down here. So let's crank that up to one and see if that makes any difference. Nope, it's still bouncing straight off. So we'll also need to increase the stickiness of the logo as well. So let's grab its cloth tag and under surface, we can find the stickiness value down here. So let's try bringing this up to 10 first and play that. And it kind of stuck slightly. It was a bit slower to fall down. So we're on the right track. Let's try cranking the stickiness way up to 100 and play that. And it looks like we've now lost our logo. So let's just zoom out here and see what's going on. If we try playing that again, it does seem to disappear straight away, which might actually be because we've got a fairly high stickiness value here, but a very low mass. And a mass value of one means our object is very light. So the high stickiness might be forcing our logo to collapse in on itself. So if we were to try increasing the mass to something like 10, Let's see if that fixes the problem. And that does stop it disappearing, but at this point we should also start increasing the sub steps so we can get a more accurate simulation. So let's hit Control D to bring up the project settings and under simulation, we can increase the sub steps here. And we'll need a fairly high value because our animation is moving quite fast. So let's bring this up to 100 and try that. And now things are starting to behave a bit more as we'd expect. And that logo is sticking and slowly sliding down the wall. So let's head back to the cloth tag and take a look at some of the other settings we can play with. At the top here, we've got bendiness, which is active by default. But if we set that to zero, it's going to stop the mesh from bending on impact, which will help it keep its shape a bit better if you prefer that look. I actually don't mind a bit of bending, so I'll put that back to 10. Then we've got stretchiness, which again, as the name suggests, will allow the mesh to stretch a bit on impact and become almost like a liquid or soft body, which is quite cool. And a little goes a long way with this value, so I might just drop it down to 0.01, just so we get a slight stretch when they peel off the wall there. We could also try adding a bit of friction, which should help them stay in place a bit longer when they slam into the wall, like so. And that's also slowing their slide down the wall as well. And the stickiness is actually making those letters stick together as they come in contact with each other, which is quite cool. But as for the example animation, I think I had the friction set even higher at 1000 and 3000 for the stickiness. And I also made the logo a lot heavier by increasing the mass to 1000 which gave me something like this. And we get some nice bending and folding as it peels down off the wall. Then if we want to smooth this geometry out a bit, we can always bring in a subdivision surface and just plonk that into here, which should make things look a bit more organic, like so. So that's the simulation part done. So let's cache the animation now over in the cloth tag under cache 
we'll cache the scene. And when that's done, we should be able to play this back in real time and scrub freely through the timeline, even with that subdivision surface enabled. So all that's left to do now is to generate the trail this is going to leave on the wall as it slides down onto the ground, like we see in our render here. So let's bring a plane into our scene. And in there, I just wanna tweak the orientation so it's in line with the wall. And I'll just position that right on the front face of the cube, about there. And I'll just scale this down and bring it up so the edge is right on top of the floor, like so. Then we can hide our cube for now because we've cached the animation already, so we don't need that anymore. And now that we've got our plane in place, we're going to use it to generate the trails. So let's just subdivide it a bit, maybe 100 by 100. And we're going to use a vertex map to generate a map of the part of the plane that comes into contact with the logo. So on the plane, let's hit Shift C again, and we'll grab a vertex map which makes the plane turn red, which indicates the area of the map, which is inactive. But we wanna set this up so that the parts that are in contact with the logo are active. And in which case, we'll turn yellow. So let's set that up. We need to go to the fields tab of our vertex map and add our logo to have this interact with that. And we'll probably wanna use the low res remesh instead of the original logo here, because that's what we've got our dynamics applied to. So let's drag that down into our fields box, which starts to introduce some of that yellow I mentioned. But let's just play this and see what's going on. And it's running a little bit slow and it also doesn't quite look like it's working the way we want. That yellow area doesn't seem to be following that geometry. So let's just disable the subdivision surface for now. And because we're using a remesh in here, the vertex map might be having trouble registering the geometry. So when in doubt, it can be a good idea to put your setups inside a connect object to connect everything into a single mesh. And we'll need to grab the vertex map again and we'll get rid of the remesh object here and switch it for the connect object. And when we do that, it'll ask whether this is a spline or point object. So let's go with point. And that looks like it's working. So let's see if we get a better result here. And it's definitely running faster and the yellow part is following the logo nicely down the wall wherever the two collide. But we don't want it to just follow the geometry. We also want it to leave a trail behind. And we also want the yellow part to be confined a bit closer to the objects and not bleeding outward like this. So let's fix that first. If we grab the connect object in our fields list here, we can reduce that bleeding outward by dropping the radius down to one. And that brings it in closer to the geometry like so. We could probably also switch the mode to surface as well and see what that gives us. Okay, so we've got the interaction right now. We just need to leave a trail behind, which is actually pretty easy to do. We just need to go in here and add a decay to our fields list. And this is going to make the highlighted area of our vertex map stick around a little bit longer. Let's have a look. And you can see we've now got a little bit of a trail happening but rather than staying on the wall, it's fading away pretty quickly. But if we increase the effect strength over here to 100%, we should be able to stop it from fading away. And now we're left with a nice trail of points as it slides down the wall, which is pretty cool. However, if we zoom in here, you can see that the edges of our trail look a bit blocky and low resolution. And the smoothness is actually going to depend on the resolution of the object that we've applied our vertex map to which in this case is the plane we created before. So to smooth that out, we just need to increase the segments in our plane down here. And we should keep these values the same as well, so the geometry is nice and even. And now if we rewind this again, we should get a much smoother looking result. And we're able to catch a lot more of that detail in our trails as well. And I think for our final render, I actually took this up to 1000 by 1000 segments, so we could smooth out all those little jagged edges. So finally, we can export this vertex map as a black and white mat that we can use later in compositing to add in the trail. So I'll quickly show you how you can do that with Redshift. If we scooch over here to our render settings, we just need to switch to Redshift first. Then we'll open up our materials panel and create a new Redshift material. Then we'll double click on that to bring it up in the node editor. 
and we'll hit C to browse our nodes here. And the one we're looking for is the vertex attribute. So we'll add that guy. And our vertex attribute, it's a vertex map input, which we need to add here in the attribute name box. So let's just drag our vertex map into there. And we can plug that into the color channel of our material. And now if we close this and apply the material to our plane, we can fire up our Redshift render view. And if we render this, we get a nice black and white mat that we can use in comping to mask in the trail. And if we hop over into After Effects, where I have my final render, you'll see as we play through this, our logo is leaving a purple mark on the wall. And that's coming from this layer here, which is just the beauty pass that I've tinted with a tritone effect here. And I've just sampled a few colors from the logo itself, so the trail matches the color. So if we turn that off and on, you can see we've just comped that into the scene. And this is just being masked by that black and white map that we just set up, which I rendered off separately, which looks like this. And I've just set that layer below to Luma Matte, so we can use the light and dark values as a mask. And that's pretty much it for this effect. But if we just hop back into Cinema 4D, the best thing about this setup is that it's fully procedural as well. So at any time, we can come back to our cloth tag and just clear out that cached animation. And now if we go back to our text object, we can change this to anything we want and everything should update perfectly. And we can now have that exact same effect on different text. And the vertex map should also update automatically. So you can switch this out with anything you like. And when you're ready to render it off, we can switch the subdivision surface back on and we're ready to go. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project files below to save a bit of time or head over to our website where you can download every project file from every tutorial we've ever made. Big thanks to this month's patrons and CG insiders. You guys are the best and there's no way we can make all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers guys. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, give it a like so we know what to make next. Or just let us know what you need help with down in the comments. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when we post new videos just like this one. You can find loads of CG training, assets and resources on our website, cgshortcuts.com or become a member to access exclusive premium content. That's it for now. Here's a few more videos you might like.